So this is problem number 21, chapter 8 of the ninth edition of uh, Nixon Rydell's Electric Circuits. And in this problem, we're given a circuit that looks like this. We have 7.5 volts here at time zero, charging a capacitor. Then after time zero, the switch flips to position B, and current starts to flow. The capacitor starts to release energy to the rest of the, the uh, the circuit. Um, and we're asked to find the voltage across the inductor for um, the step response for the voltage across the inductor. So the immediate challenge is that we don't have anything that looks familiar. We have a capacitor in parallel with an inductor and then we have something here that doesn't, doesn't look like a parallel RLC. So the strategy for solving this problem is first, we're going to turn this into a parallel RLC circuit by converting this branch here into a resistor, its equivalent resistance. The second thing, strategy to solving this is after we have done that, then we need to identify what type of response this will be. Will it be uh, overdamped, underdamped, or critically damped? And we'll do that by comparing alpha to omega and solve, knowing what type of response will give us the, uh, the step response, the general step response equation, and the coefficient equations as well. Um, and in, in order to solve for the, jet, the, the step response, we'll need to solve for the initial conditions. Um, what initial voltage does this capacitor have? That will tell us how much current is going in. Um, so initial conditions, and we need to solve final conditions, like as, as uh, time approaches infinity, how much current and how much voltage will be left. So, and then we'll solve for the coefficients of our general equation. So that is the strategy. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is turn this into a parallel RLC circuit. resistance. So let's do this. Take a look at that part of the circuit. Minus plus 16 times 10 to the minus third I sub P. Okay. Twenty-four kilo ohms here and in parallel with 40 kilo ohm. Note that the equivalent resistance is not just this. It's not that. Because the added source, the um, dependent voltage source, adds resistance to the system. So how are we going to solve that? We're going to solve that by using um, mesh, essentially what ends up being mesh currents, adding the currents around here. But except for we don't have to actually solve the mesh current. We, what we need to do is we need to, we'll use Ohm's law. We're going to find the total voltage. V total, and we're going to divide that by the total current, I total. And that, of course, by Ohm's law, is going to give you R total, which is the total resistance in the system. Okay? Alright, so, the voltage across here is going to be this voltage, 16, the dependent voltage source, and we have I sub B, I forgot to make that. I sub B is going this way. Okay? So 16 times 10 to the minus third I sub B plus the voltage across this is going to be I total, right? The uh, voltage of the total current, right? There's going to be some that splits here, some that splits here has the voltage drop. So it's going to be I sub total times R equivalent. Okay, so whatever that equivalent resistance is. So let's, the problem we have now is that we have this I sub phi, and we have two unknowns. Well, I sub phi is the current that's going just through this capacitor, or excuse me, this resistor. 
So to get it in terms of I sub total, we use current division. So current division says that I sub phi will equal 40k over 24k plus 40k. That's what current division says. And so we're going to substitute that back into this equation. So then now we're only going to have, oh, excuse me, and times I sub total. Okay. We're going to substitute this identity for I sub phi back into I sub phi. Then we'll be left only with I sub total. Okay. Up here. So substituting into that yields 16 times well, V total, let's write it as an equation. V total is equal to 16 times 10 to the negative third times I sub phi, substitute that in, 40 over 24 plus 40, 64. 64, I sub total, plus I sub total, uh, well, REQ, which is 1 over 24K plus 1 over 40K raised to the negative 1 times I sub total. Okay? But we're looking for REQ, right? And REQ is going to be V total divided by I sub total. Now, if we divide through everything by I sub total, we'll get our equivalent resistance. That cancels out, that cancels out. So we have equivalent resistance of 16 times 10 to the negative third times 40 over 64 plus 1 over 24K plus 1 over 40K all that raised to the negative one power. If you put that in your calculator, you should come up with 25 kilo ohms. So that, so now we can replace all that in our circuit with 25 kilo ohms. And uh, so essentially what we did was uh, kind of like a, a feminine equivalent circuit. So that takes care of the first part of our strategy. So now we have something, a, um, a circuit that we know how to analyze, which is a parallel RLC circuit. Let's replace that with 25 kilo ohms. strategy is to identify what type of response this is. To do that, we need alpha and omega. Alpha is 1 over 2 RC. Omega naught is 1 over root LC. Just plug the numbers. This is 2 times uh, 25 kilo ohm times 4 nanofarads. Put that into your calculator, you should come up with 5,000 radians per second. And over here, omega naught is going to be 1 over root of 15.625, 65 henrys times 4 nanofarads. Put that into your calculator, you should come up with 4 radians per second. Okay, so we have a case where alpha is greater than omega naught, so therefore this, the system is overdamped, and we know what our step response equations will be. So let's pull it out and put it to the side, and that and uh, work towards that. 
Okay, so our step response equation, our general equation for the inductor voltage is going to be, we'll put it here, V, we're working towards uh, a VL of T is equal to VF plus A1E, A1 prime E to the S1T plus A2 prime E to the S2T. That's gonna, our general equation is going to look like that. Let's take, do the easy stuff first. Easy stuff. Well, whatever voltage, when the capacitor chip switches over, it looks like this, right? At B, the circuit looks like this. The capacitor is going to switch over with some initial voltage, V sub C. Okay. The capacitor is going to switch over with some voltage V sub C. But over time, capacitors and inductors cannot generate energy. They rely on outside uh, voltage source. So they're going to dissipate all their energy since there's there, if it was connected to some kind of voltage source, then we would have a different V final. Or a, a, or a current source, we'd have a different V final or I final. But the fact that there is nothing as, when it switches over, it's completely disconnected from this voltage source the power will all dissipate, and you're going to end up with a V final of zero. So that is the easy one, zero volts for V final. S1 and S2 are pretty easy also. S1, 2 is going to equal negative alpha plus or minus, plus minus, root alpha squared plus, oops, not plus, minus, Omega naught squared. Okay. Well, what is that? We solved for alpha earlier before. And um, so S1, well, this is the common thing, so let's solve for that. Root of alpha squared minus omega naught squared will be root of 5,000 squared minus 4,000 squared. Put that into your calculator, you should get 3,000. So then S1 will be negative 5,000 plus 3,000. Sorry, video two.